What happens when we start our microgreens under a certain light, but then at the end of the growth, introduce it to a more powerful light? Can we affect the growth, appearance, or taste of the crop? In this video, we're hoping to find that out with Purple Kurabi. So before we get into the light aspect of this grow, let's quickly talk about the actual crop itself and what we've done so far. So each one of these trays has 15 grams of purple kurabi per tray. And it's all being grown on a medium called coco kawar. All of the tray setup is the exact same and they all went through the exact same blackout process, which was six days total, which breaks down into four days with weight and two days of blackout. That's the current state that all these are in. And I believe that they're actually pretty even here. So the main difference with this test is all four of these trays are going to be started under the exact same light over here, which is our 20 watt LEDs, except towards the end of this grow, probably about two days before it's time to harvest, I'm going to take these two orange trays and I'm going to move them down here into our much more powerful panel LED lights. Since we're introducing all of these to the lights, what we're going to do is begin bottom watering all of these trays. And I'm going to be using ocean solution for our nutrients on this grow because it's something that we have really great results with and it's an organic nutrient. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these placed on. To make sure this test is pretty consistent, what I've done is I've done orange, white, orange, white for our trays. That way I know that maybe it's not just this side that's closer to the fan that's getting better growth or the side that's not towards the fan or something like that. So just to create a little bit more, hopefully um, balanced of a grow, I'm gonna kind of spread these guys out a little bit. So that's it for right now. I'm gonna get some water added and I'll see you guys in a few days when it's time to move the orange trays into the more powerful LED lights. Today is day 10 of our purple kurabi lighting experiment. So now these have been under the light for four days underneath these T5s. And what we're gonna do is take these two orange trays today and we're gonna slide them underneath these 300 watt uh, equivalent LED panel lights. To show you really quickly though, the difference in lighting, I've got my PAR meter here to show you. So these all have the same exact light. So I'm gonna use this blank space up here to show you. If I put this in the middle of the shelf, I'm getting about 75 PAR. Let's go look at the other shelf now. Coming down to our 300 watt ones, we're at about 470 PAR. So there is a 400 increase in PAR between these lights. So I'm excited to see what kind of coloration we can get. And we'll just go ahead and do this on camera real quick. So I'm gonna take our orange trays and they are going to go underneath our panel lights. And I'm realizing our panel lights don't light up our entire tray. So what we're gonna have to do for this experiment is actually place these sideways underneath the LED panel lights because the panel lights do not have the correct light coverage. As you can see right here, we're gonna not get light on the front and the backs if we position it in the correct orientation. So for this experiment, these two will have to go sideways, but we will do everything else the same. They're gonna get the exact same nutrients as those over there, and we're gonna see what kind of color differences we can get between these two shelves. I'll see you guys in a few days once these have had a chance to get some light. We have now had two of these trays under the more powerful lights for about two days. So let's pull everything off the shelf and let's take a look at all these trays side by side. These two trays, remember the white trays are our uh, just 20 watt LED lights all the way through. And these do look really great, but I'm excited to see these two, which were under the more powerful light for two days. Oof, that growth looks super solid. And I had to actually pause the video and turn off this purple light because I didn't want it to mess with the actual results of what's going on with this test. So if you'll come over here now, we can take a closer look at everything. So as you can see, all the growth looks great across all four of these trays, but the main thing was we were trying to get some purple coloration under these more powerful lights, and I think that we have achieved that. As you can see around all the cotyledons, we're seeing a lot of that beautiful purple that we saw by putting these underneath of the more powerful lights. Especially here on the edges with these smaller cotyledons, you can see they're almost all purple in their color. And if you look at the 20 watt LEDs only, we're not hardly seeing any of that purple coloration, though there is a very faint line around some of the cotyledons that has that purple tone to it. It is nothing like what we're seeing over here underneath the more powerful light. Now that we've taken a quick look at everything and we saw that we can get coloration on the cotyledons, 
I'm gonna harvest all of these and we're gonna see if this increased our harvest weight on these two and if it changed the color of the stems or anything else that we might be missing by just looking at the canopy. So I'll see you guys in just a moment once I've harvested all four of these trays and set some aside from each group. I have finished harvesting all four of the trays and now let's go over the weights. So just to quickly clarify, these two right here, these were the ones that stayed only in the 20 watt LEDs and then these two over here were the ones that went into the 300 watt equivalent for the last two days. So starting with our two that were only in the 20 watts, uh, we had a harvest weight from one of the trays of 236 grams and the other tray had a harvest weight of 249 grams. The total average was 242.5 grams between these two trays. The 300 watt equivalent trays had a total harvest weight of 230 grams on one tray. It was slightly dehydrated, so I think this should have had a slightly higher uh, harvest weight, but that's okay. And then the other tray had a total harvest weight of 278 grams. Uh, with a total average of 254 grams. The 300 watt equivalent group won on weight. Now let's talk about the appearance and then we'll get to a taste test. So taking a look at the cotyledons, these are the 20 watt group right here and this is the 300 watt equivalent group right here. So you can see there's a pretty good difference here between the coloration on both of these groups. While the product on the 20 watt uh, LEDs is really nice, you could just see how much better the appearance is on these 300 watt equivalents when they got finished for two days under that light. You can also see underneath the cotyledons on these 300 watt equivalent side, we have this really nice purple underneath the stems, or underneath the cotyledons, as well as a really beautiful stem coloration that seems to almost be a little bit darker in color than the 20 watt uh, group was. So overall the appearance, I'm gonna have to say, is the winner is on the 300 watt equivalent group, it's just beautiful. We have really nice cotyledons with a really nice purple around the edges. The stem color is very nice and dark and purple. And we do have some underside purple coloration as well on the 300 watt equivalent. I do think that the presentation on this 20 watt group is still really nice, though I think you'd have to agree that the presentation on these are much, much better. Now let's move into taste testing each one of them. So we'll try some from the 20 watt groups. Give Mandy a little bit, and I'll taste a little bit. I'm gonna taste one from each group since it should be basically identical. So it's very crunchy. It's very nice, it has a very strong brassica flavor. I haven't noticed any bitterness. I really enjoy the flavor on that 20 watt group. On to the 300 watt equivalent group. Much crunchier. Really great flavor, I mean, super strong brassica flavor. I feel like it was slightly stronger than the 20 watt group. No bitterness whatsoever. And overall, I do love the product on that as well. I would say it's a slightly more fibrous, but I think that's a good thing. I think it plays into it because it actually has a really, really nice flavor. Get this light turned back on now. Overall winner here for appearance, growth, and taste I'm gonna go with the two trays that were finished underneath the 300 watt equivalent lights. Uh, they just provided us with really great growth. I love the coloration and the fact that we can get this much coloration difference in two days is pretty dang astounding. I mean, you can see we've got nice purples underneath, a nice dark stem, and then the cotyledons themselves have that nice beautiful purple around the edge. So it's really cool that we can do that in just two days after doing the majority of the grow on a much cheaper, easier light. And I believe the cost is pretty comparable. Let me just double check real quick. The cost per day on the 20 watt LEDs is 12 cents per day. The cost to run the 300 watt equivalents are 23 cents per day. So to finish the crop under the 300 watt equivalents for two days, it costs us 46 cents in energy, which is about 22 cents higher than it would have cost to just leave them on the shelf. So I think for an extra 22 cents to get this amount of coloration difference and actually the extra growth as well, I think that it is highly worth it to use those lights. The only issue I would say is the upfront cost of the 300 watt equivalent lights. They do cost substantially more per light. I think they're $70 per light compared to $6 per light on the T5s. So that is a pretty huge gap for most people. But I think that if you wanna take your product to the next level and you have a little bit of cash to spend and you want extra presentation for your crops, I think that investing in some, like maybe two of these 300 watt equivalent lights like we have right here, just to finish some of your trays under, especially some of the crops like purple kohlrabis, uh, purple sprouting broccoli, maybe red acre cabbage, anything with that beautiful coloration that I think would really benefit from that extra light, I think it might be worth it. 
That is it for this experiment. I wanted to see what would happen if we started purple kohlrabi underneath these 20 watt LEDs and then finished them underneath these 300 watt equivalent lights. I wanted to see if it would affect the growth, appearance, or taste of the crop, and I think that we saw that it affected all three of these quite substantially. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give us a thumbs down. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the section below, and we'd love to get those answered for you as soon as we possibly can. Our Instagram and our Facebook are both at On The Grow Farms, and we have a website where we have lots of great information. That is www.onthegrow.net. Thank you so much for the support, and keep on believing.